how you operate and how you fuel yourself and where your mind is helps fuel your career and it helps you I could have took this two ways. Um, this is me super excited in an optimistic mood, feeling good and excited about this idea I had, coming across someone who's thinking negatively and was in a pe pessimistic mind state. And I let it encourage me, I let it motivate me. Fast forward a few months, things are going well, the website's up and running, I'm coming home from school every day, writing about five to ten articles on Chicago hip hop, local talent that wasn't being highlighted yet before. And I was having so much fun, and I knew that I wanted to take the next step. Uh, so I decided I'm going to throw a show. Keep in mind, I'm still living in Plano. I've never thrown a show before. I don't have any money, and I have little to no resources. So I figured I'd throw a free show, um, and maybe the artists would come out and perform for free. Throughout the night, we had about 300 people come through throughout the night, and it was incredible. It was the best thing that I could have ever imagined. And it made me realize that this was something special. This is something I can do. This is a lot bigger than I had anticipated. All my goals that I set were always realistic. It was just my way of never letting myself down and always being able to accomplish more. This was an accomplishment that I had never foreseen. About half a year later, I'm now a freshman at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm now living in the city that I had always once dreamt of. It felt amazing, and I, I felt now I can, I can really do this. I can, I can be where I've always wanted to be. I don't need to drive an hour and a half anymore. I'm here. Uh, I would have artists come through my dorm room every day. We'd do interviews. I'd shoot music videos in my dorm room all the time. It was utilizing everything I could. My freshman year in college, I didn't really have a social life. I didn't really have any friends because I was just working. I had two priorities. It was school and it was Lyrical Lemonade. And the few friends that I did have were always so confused that I was glued to a computer 24-7. Um, and I just told him, I was like, I'm on a mission, guys. Like, you'll see one day. You might, it might not make sense now, but it will one day, I promise. I had saved up around $3,000. Uh, a local artist from Philadelphia named Lil Uzi Vert. I didn't know Lil Uzi Vert. I didn't know his manager. All the shows I'd done before, I would just contact the artist or the manager. I couldn't do that now. So I was like, how do I book Lil Uzi Vert? So I Googled how to book Lil Uzi Vert. An agency website popped up, BP Agency, and I called them, and I got directly in contact with his agent and then his manager, and they said that he was $8,000 to book uh, with a 20% deposit, so $2,000. I signed the contract and I wired over the money that night and I had booked Lil Uzi Vert. Around this time, I was working with artists on videos like Famous Dex and Warhol. Quavo, 
was Amigos. And he, uh, he called me, and he asked if I could come to Atlanta the next day. So I got off the phone, I booked a ticket to Atlanta the next day. I remember going there and being so nervous because I had never worked with such a major artist. And this is, keep in mind, the, the biggest rap group in the country, if not in the whole world. And all I had was myself and my little Sony a7S II camera. I didn't have a big production team. I didn't have any crazy equipment. I just had myself, and these are people who are used to all the glitz and glamour. So I get there, super nervous, and I remember Quavo showing um, my videos to Offset and Takeoff. Yo, this kid, he's like, he's something special. And that let me know I was supposed to be there. And it gave me the confidence that I needed. And I pushed through the shoot, and it went incredible. And I went home, I started editing. I was so excited, it's all I could think about. Keep in mind, I was never connected to a manager of the Migos or the label. I was just talking to Quavo. So it was like, he's on tour, he's a, he's a huge artist, he's getting back to me like every three days or so with feedback on the video and what he wants me to um, adjust and change. So about a month and a half goes by of this and I'm working about 12 hours a day on this video. And uh, he kind of just tells me, you know, we're already working on our next project, I think we're gonna shelf this one, hopefully we can work on something in the future. And it was just like that. And for me, this was all I was thinking about for two months. And I felt like I was at the tip top. I, I could really feel um, like a new life and, and, and um, entering a new chapter and being able to reach new goals that I'd always dreamt of. And I just fell to the ground. It was like I had it, I tasted it, and then I lost it. My mindset and my optimistic thinking pushed me through it. I had to remember that I'm a glass half full type of thinker. I could easily be half empty right now but I have to be half full. Things are getting a lot serious and school is inevitably becoming a second priority. And I was like, man, I just, I, I can't do this anymore. I need to pick. It's Lyric Lemonade or it's school. I made a list of goals and I said, I'm gonna drop out and if I don't accomplish these goals within a trimester's term, 10 weeks, I'll come back. Blew them away and never looked back. I think that, um, there are truly two types of people. Um, like I said, we have our half full. But I also think that there are people who like to be understood, and there are people who like to understand. I got a phone call from J. Cole. Um, I'll never forget it. I was sitting in my office. He called me. And um, we were talking about doing a video, and we got off topic of it real quick. And he just wanted to know about my story and, and ask about me. And we talked for about an hour and a half just about me. So confused. Um, why does he keep asking me questions? He just wanted to know about me. He just wanted to learn and understand. And it was, it was inspiring to me. And I also think that it's no coincidence that when J. Cole and I did work, his artist writer, this is where you request, this is where the artist requests what they want to eat and drink and uh, technical, whatever it may be, uh, on the video set, most people request bottles, Bel Air and Ciroc and five pizzas and 60,000 chicken wings. And he just requested a PB&J. And it was the craziest thing. Um, and something about that just showed me a lot about himself. And it, it made me think that he's grounded. He's accomplished so much, but he's grounded. And he has an optimistic way of thinking. I'm very thankful to have gone through all the experiences that I've gone through and learned all the things that I've learned, but I truly don't think that I would have gotten to this point if I didn't think with the mindset that I had. Um, you have to be a problem solver, and you have to understand that sometimes there's no way to solve the problem, and that's part of problem solving. Um, you know, when I, went in that, when I went to Atlanta and got excited and really got to taste that and then fell to the ground, I needed to get back up. I needed to, to tap into my mindset. Uh, when I was uh, depressed and I was figuring out whether I wanted to stay in school or not and I couldn't balance things, I needed to tap into my mindset. Um, when I was at school and I was getting this off the ground, I needed to tap into my mindset to take it there. It's all about your mindset and how you think, and I truly believe that anyone could do it. It's all right here, and it sounds cliche, but it's, but it's the truth. You can really, really, truly do anything you put your mind to. And I honestly, wholeheartedly believe that.